Compositing in Fusion can be tricky in a lot of ways, but everything gets harder when your nodes are all messy, like this. <sighs> How are we supposed to deal with any of that? <laughs> Look at this, it's like spaghetti, and there's not even that many nodes. This isn't even that complicated of a composition, and it's already just crazy sauce. But here are a couple easy things that you can do to get your nodes all organized. First thing I would do is right click on the empty space and go down to arrange tools. And you're gonna wanna do a couple things here. One is you're gonna uncheck auto arrange, uncheck to grid. Eh, you could do grid if you want to, but I like to check to connected. So we want this to look just like that. Because when you have it set like that, then these nodes will kind of snap to each other. Oh, look at that beauty. Wow, it's a beauty. Snap to each other, which is useful to keep things lined up a little bit. Okay. Oh, look at that beauty. What a beautiful beauty. And just that in itself is going to help a lot. So we can get these all lined up a little more. Very nice. And things are already helped a lot. The next thing that's gonna help is just to spread things out a touch. It can be really tempting to have everything kind of nice and compact like this, but when you do and you want to add something, so let's say we wanna add a blur here, well then it kind of goes over other stuff and then you have to move things around like this and it's just a little bit more work. But if you kind of zoom out a little bit and you just spread these out just a touch, just spread them out a little bit, so that we have just a little more room. You can kind of relax a little bit. You need to zoom in and out maybe just a little more, but then it's not that big of a deal if I wanna add something else, it's just pretty easy. And then probably the biggest tip that I can give you is to have a standard for how you organize your nodes. You'll notice that these nodes flow into each other and you can read them and see kind of what's going on, but the way that you actually place the nodes on screen can really help you stay organized and help you quickly understand and troubleshoot and just follow the flow of your nodes. So what the heck do I mean what by do you that? Mean? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? This is already kind of set up accidentally how I normally do it, but I definitely see a lot of people doing this kind of thing, you know, where they have nodes kind of going any which way, which is fine. I mean, it will give you the same result, but at a glance, can you look at this and tell me what the very most background layer of this composition is? It would be really hard because you'd have to go through and actually look at all of these connections and figure out which is the background, which is the foreground, and it just takes more time than it really needs to. But if you have a standard where you always put your background on one line and you always have a foreground coming in from a certain direction, then that can just be a little bit easier. The way that I like to do it is when I have a merge, I like the background to come in on the left and the foreground to come in on the top and the mask to come in from the bottom. It really doesn't matter what the standard is as long as you pick it and you stick to it. So for this, I have my background coming in from the top, I have the foreground coming in from the right. By the way, I can tell the background is the background because it's yellow. The foreground is green, and that's always true for the merges, okay, for a merge node. So what I like to do is as I'm building this, you can do this afterwards like I'm doing it too, but as I'm building this, I like to generally put things on one line like this. So this is like the main line. And on that main line, that's like the main composition. You can think of it as the big bucket that everything kind of goes in everything gets connected in that main line. So we'll just take this here, we'll just say planar tracker and the merge. And because these are set to kind of snap to line up with each other, this makes it really nice to have this horizontal line here. Everything here is on the foreground. So I'm gonna take this down into the top of that merge. Everything here is the mask. And so that's going to come in from the bottom. This is kind of a little offshoot thing. So that works just fine like that. So now this is a lot more organized. We have our nodes for our foreground. We have our nodes for the mask and our nodes for the background. And no matter what I'm compositing, if the foreground is always above this main line, the masks are generally below the main line, and then the backgrounds kind of come in from the left, then I don't need to pay as much attention to these colors every second of the day just to figure out what the heck is going on. For stuff that's like pretty simple, where I'm just gonna run a image through a few effects like this. So I have this media in one, this is an image and then lens blur, color corrector, blur, brightness and contrast, and planar transform, those are all effects. 
And so I can just run them through like that. And I don't have a problem doing that because it's really obvious what's happening. But if I were going to, let's say, merge something over this first, let's just grab some text. And I was going to merge this over. What I would do is the same thing as I would have the background here coming in from the left of the merge, the foreground coming in from the top, right? And so if I wanted to do a bunch of stuff to the background, then I would have those coming in kind of along this main line for the background of this merge. And then this makes an image which runs through the effects, which go into the foreground of this merge. And this is the main line of our composition. Okay. Like I said, you don't have to do it this way. This is the way that after years of using Fusion, uh, I've really kind of started to standardize. And I think it's really helpful to generally build like that. Fusion by default kind of builds left to right, which something like Nuke builds top to bottom. But yeah, this is a nice way to do it. So if you're getting confused and overwhelmed by all of the nodes, align the icons to each other, spread them out and have a standard. And hey, if you don't know me, my name's Casey and I teach Fusion. And right now I want you to click on this video because we are making some motion graphics some animated motion graphics inside of the Fusion page. I bet you didn't even know you can do that. And it's actually really cool. So this is a great next video to watch. Thanks for stopping by San Diego. Nice work, everyone. Sharp broadcast. Really good. Everyone on the floor as well. Really a lot of hustle. I liked it. <laughs>